This is a curl up. We're going to be lying down on our back with our head on the floor and our hands are going to be at the base of our spine. Our back has a natural curve in it, so we're just going to be supporting that with the hands under the back. So from here, take the lie down, head on the floor, hands under the back. From here, I'm going to be keeping my elbows down on the floor so I don't round my shoulders up. And then I'm going to be bringing one leg up so the heel and foot is flat on the floor. I'm going to be using the breathing and bracing that we learned in the bracing video to inflate my stomach and then tense. And then once I've took that breath of air in and I've tensed, I'm going to be lifting my head up off the floor, but I'm only going to be lifting my head up off the floor around about an inch. The aim is to try and lift the head up off the floor without changing the position of the torso. So I'll show you an example of how it's supposed to look and then also what would happen if we were to come up too far. So from here I can take my breath in, I tense, and then my head, I lift my head up ever so slightly. We'll be holding this position for the amount of time that was prescribed and also then we'll be going through the amount of reps that is prescribed. This is an exercise that's done on both sides. So you'd be doing the set amount of reps on one leg and then you'd be switching the legs and doing the same amount of reps on the other leg, which would be the exact same thing where we would take our breath in, we brace and then the head comes up. Notice how everything from kind of my hips up to my shoulders stays really still and it's just my head that lifts. If I was to lift too far up or my shoulders come off the floor, I'm going to start rounding my back, which is going to put pressure into that lower back and potentially trigger any of the pain um, in terms of the herniations uh, and disc um, injuries we've got. So from here, if I was to come up too far, I end up pushing my back down into my hands. So you can use those hands as a bit of a tool to know whether uh, you've come up too far. So when we've got our head down on our floor and our arms are down, when we take that breath in and we brace, we shouldn't feel any more pressure where my hands are now to here. If you feel like as you lift your head up, there's more pressure down in your hands, then you've moved your back at the same time as your head. We're gonna be doing those exercises again on both sides for the set amount of reps, the set amount of hold time, and the set amount of sets in our routine. Similar to what I mentioned in the breathing and bracing video, we can do that with power breathing down the line. So if you find that you're able to handle that tension quite well, uh, then in a couple weeks as the routine progresses and we get more set time, we can add power breathing into that, which would look something like this. Same setup. I take my breath, I tense, head comes up, and then I can go into the power breathing. We'll be doing that power breathing for the set amount of um, time that is prescribed. A really good uh, rule of thumb is if every time you do one of the power breaths, that's every second, then you can just end up doing, if you were holding it for 10 seconds, I'm gonna do 10 power breaths. And it makes it nice and easy rather than uh, having a random amount of breaths for the time and having to keep your eye on uh, how long you've been holding it for. So just think I'm gonna do, if it's 10 seconds, 10 power breaths, and then that's easy to kind of keep track of things. 